Okie dokie, it says we are live. Hey guys, welcome to another regular Wednesday night live stream. I was supposed to have a different guest, but my fill-in guest, David Lionhelm, former senator, David Lionhelm, is a pretty good get. Um, thank you so much, uh, David, for coming on my show. This is the first time you've actually been on my show officially because we've interacted in the past. This is the first time you've been on my show. Yes, thank you for having me. How good is that? <laughs> No, very, very good, and uh, and uh, I'm pleased to be here. As you should be. Um, this is a good show. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'll try to maintain the standard. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's funny. You're awesome. All right, cool. Well, I thought it was um, very fitting that I have you because um, you made the headlines some time ago and actually recently did a video on um, women in politics and how oftentimes they ruin the political world. Yes, I am saying that everyone. I'm not a politician. I'm a political commentator who happens to be a female. I'm not in the game of politics, so I can make that judgment. Anyway, and she, um, uh, Sarah Hansen Young, was the example I used. Actually, it was thanks to this guy here who assisted me. Um, he he said, you know, if you wanted an example of a woman in politics that that really does um, meet your criteria. My criteria was overly emotional and um, gullible. And um, Sarah Hansen Young is both those things. And it's it's a good video. Um, and it's it's anyway. My and um, in the video, I do reference the fact that uh, she, you know, cried and you know spat the dummy about um, oh no, you know, um, men shouldn't be shouldn't be slut shaming and this and that. But that's the arena she stepped into. I've stepped into this arena uh, as well, and it's rough and it's nasty and and um and people are mean. They are especially men. Men are quite mean as well. Um, and and they, I would prefer a man treat a woman like a woman, not not like an equal, because um, men and women are different. They just are. But in the political world, that that's not a, a, a pleasantry that is offered. And so, what, tell everyone what you said, as opposed to what the media said. The media said that you called her a slut, but you didn't. So clar clarify. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I never, I never did that. I don't actually. No, think, I know you didn't. I don't think the media said that, but. Um, oh, I thought they did. Okay. But no, so the, the the only problem is this. This is a defamation case. Um, it's under appeal at the moment, and we're waiting on um, a decision to be handed down. The mm -hmm. appeal occurred in May, and the uh, the decision on in the appeal. Um, is well probably not far away. Oh, so this is for that case specifically. Yes. So you can't talk about it. So is that what you're trying my, to say? My, yeah. So my lawyer okay. advised me that um, it would be prudent not to discuss it until the appeal okay. is That's uh, fine. released. I, I'm very happy to talk about Greens politicians, um, ah. but, but I, I won't. I wouldn't want to talk about uh, any particular. I didn't so, know that. Sorry, you didn't. You didn't stipulate that prior to to the interview. No. That's your fault. I'm no, just kidding. All right, cool. That's that's not. <laughs> that's fine. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk about something else. Libertarianism. Why are you? Why is that where you have um, landed? Because a lot of the the right wingers hate you, <laughs> or hate libertarianism as a concept because because it's response, you know, because of it, you know, you have, because of it, you know, you you encourage baby killing and because of it, you encourage euthanasia and because of it, you encourage drugs and um, and it's all the crafty work of, 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 of the Jays. Um, mm. What are your thoughts? You know what I mean by Jays? <laughs> oh, no, I don't. I, I, I can guess. They wear small hats and have big noses. Oh, oh, the Jays. Okay. <laughs> you almost tried to avoid the word for YouTube, but you just said it. Oh, yeah. So, Go. Go okay. respond. so the difference between a libertarian and a right winger, I suppose. Um, mm. I don't is, have a home. I'm displaced yeah. at the moment. But libertarians don't want to make you do anything. Um, the one thing that they are opposed to is coercion. And, and I'm aware of this. Coercion is, is the big baddie in libertarian world. So you know, that we have a joke. Uh, libertarians want to take over the world and leave you alone. 
And that's really the summary of it. We don't like mm -hmm. coercion. And mm -hmm. we focus, of course, on government coercion. So mm -hmm. that government coercion takes um, all sorts of uh, routes. So it can be financial coercion. So that's mm -hmm. high taxation. So we oppose, we oppose uh, high taxation. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, libertarians are the ones who originally coined the phrase taxation is theft. Uh, yes. We, we do acknowledge, though, we're it's not anarchists. Extortion. Libertarians are not anarchists, so we do believe in some government. We just think it should be much, much smaller than, uh, than governments currently are, either in Australia or any as other country. Limited. As limited as possible. Yeah, as little as possible. So, um, so there's financial coercion is, as I said, high taxes. It's also spending your tax money on things that, uh, you know, we don't think uh, they need to, the governments need to spend that money on, that you could spend your own money better on. And that even mm -hmm. goes not just, um, uh, you know, subsidising your business or, or renewable energy or something like that. That also can include uh, subsidising the education of your children, the childcare for your children, um, hospital care, those sorts of things. Libertarians don't don't oppose a safety net for people who can't afford those things, but obviously a safety net is a completely different thing from what we have at the moment, where everybody gets free education if they want it. Every all children, all everybody gets free healthcare if they want it. All that sort of thing. So. We, that's also coercion, spending your money on things that you could pay for yourself. Then we have your social life where the government makes you do things or makes you not do things. Like at your, taxes, like pay own. for the car registration for your own car. Yes, yes. So, that, so that's a financial one. But um, let's, let's take an obvious example, bicycle helmets. Okay. Um, it's highly coercive that in Australia we have the obligation to wear a bicycle helmet um, despite the fact that it's our head. You don't fall off a bike and hurt anybody else. It's only your head that gets hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and yet the government says for your own good, you will wear a helmet. In other countries, almost no other countries is this the case. And in Europe, they all ride bicycles all over the place you can barely cross a street in uh, Amsterdam, for example, but for the bicycles. And yet nobody, hardly anybody ever wears a helmet. They might, they stick them on children sometimes, which is not silly, but that's parental choice. That's not coercion. So that's an example of uh, a government uh, coercively saying to you, you will do something. Yes. And libertarians are opposed to that as well. And then there are other things that says, that, that where the government says, you won't do something. And smoking cannabis is the one that the right wingers usually get um, cranky with me about. And they don't like cannabis. Now, I don't smoke it myself. And I don't, in, in many cases, it's not all that smart to smoke it. I've but done it a couple of times. It's fun. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I admit to having in I've done it like three times. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my point is this. Sorry, says, go. Yeah, my point is this. The government says... You will not smoke it. That's yes. good. So yes. libertarians say, make your own mind up. Um, in my opinion, mm -hmm. probably best not to do it too much if you do it at I, all. I would agree. No, I agree. But ultimately, it's your choice, not the government's choice. And that's so that's the distinction. Now, so some many right wingers get cranky with libertarians because we many. don't oppose um, recreational drugs from a law enforcement point of view, we simply yeah. say these are matters of personal choice. We don't advocate them, but they are not a matter for the government to tell us um, what's good for us. And mm. that, that's, that's, the main, that's the main difference. This, uh, the coercion aspect of it is what defines a libertarian. Libertarians are opposed to, to coercion and it cuts across everything, absolutely everything. Um, we just don't like the government's government's telling us what's good for us or not good for us as the case may mm. be hey can i sort of interrupt this whole entire interview for okay so do you know who les james is yeah yeah he's in the comment section he recently called dean at the house and they were on the phone for like an hour and a half 
Um, apparently, you threatened his life. Did you want to comment on that? I did no such thing. Uh, Les, was, Les was recently expelled from the Liberal Democratic Party um, for uh, very good reasons. And um, unfortunately, um, he hasn't learned anything from that. Um, so um, best if you ignore him, I think. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, that, that, I just wanted to... He, yeah, that's him. That's him. I'd mess him up anyway. He's a scrawny loser. You're, a, you're scrawny. I think I'm scrawnier than you, to be fair. Uh-oh, go away. But anyway, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll ignore it now. I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I knew you wouldn't. Did I Did I just embarrass you or not really? No, it's fine. No, you're okay? Okay, cool. All right, I didn't want to upset you or anything like that. Les, don't be, don't just, I mean, you don't, uh, I hope you're okay, Les. I don't want you to be upset. Anyway, I want everyone to be happy. That's the libertarian way. <laughs> oh, no, left alone, I think is, is better. Left alone. Okay, everyone, let's just leave. Let's leave. Let's leave everyone alone. Okay, so let's move on from, okay. Now, you just said that you, in your personal opinion, uh, recreational drugs is probably better not to participate. Yet on Twitter last night, you had the weird opinion that euthanasia is okay if that's the person's choice. But that they're hurting themselves. They're, and I know you're not a Christian. I mean, I assume you're not because you're you're for euthanasia. And I don't think, not to say that there are Christians that maybe there are Christians that are for it. Who knows? But uh, long story short, um, how can you be okay with euthanasia? How can you be okay with suicide just because someone else chooses it? Like it, it's like if I could stop a woman from aborting her baby. I would want to stop it. If I could stop a person from making themselves blind, I would want I would stop it. If I could stop a person from, you know, simulating the uh, the the opposite gender, I would. But you wouldn't. You you would be like, "Nah, your decision, you stuffed yourself up, live with it." That's your that's your motto literally. You actually think that. Well, abortion's a bit different because it involves uh, two people. So yeah, correct. Leave, leave that aside for the moment. Okay, okay, fair. But, Let's talk about euthanasia. And uh, so a little, a little uh, debate last night on Twitter. It wasn't much of a debate. You only gave one word answers. It's so frustrating. I wanted more out of you. <laughs> Twitter's not the forum for dis discussing anything that's a bit Twitter, more... yeah. I think I agree, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. So um, euthanasia, you know, you can't usually use that word without... Uh, more information. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, if you go back a hundred and something years, hundred and fifty mm -hmm. years, suicide was a crime. So, if you're as, as it should be, yeah, well, you're in, in a my opinion. No, yeah, right. You're in a distinct minority with that point of view. So, I'm a Christian. They are well. There's plenty of Christians who also would not share your view. Well, but, they're stupid. No, just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. My point is this, that if you own your own life, if you are not a slave, if you don't belong to somebody else, then it's your choice whether to continue that life or not. Now, that's that's the libertarian point of view. It's also the view of plenty of other people, but, but it is the libertarian point of view. You own your own life. Does that make sense? You don't belong to anybody else. So nobody else can force you to get married, can force you to be a sex slave, can do any of those sort of things because you own your own life. Mm -hmm. Now that now that includes ending it. Now, so we've changed the law a hundred and well in, within the last hundred years, um, mm -hmm. and um, it used to be if you attempted suicide and you didn't succeed, you could have been prosecuted and uh, and charged, no, you convicted of an offence. Well. That provided an incentive for you to be successful. So if you tried to kill yourself and you lived, then the likelihood is you would end up with a conviction and sometimes um, go to jail, which was really quite sad because, you know, a significant proportion of people who, who attempt to kill themselves have got mental illness. So it's, you know, you're yeah. basically talking about putting people who are not well um, in jail for having attempted to kill themselves. It also meant, as I said, that if you tried to kill yourself, um, you had an especially good reason to make sure you succeeded because, as I said, uh, you faced uh, the criminal justice system if you failed. Now, we changed the law. Um, there's, 
most very few countries now and they're not countries that we would want to emulate where suicide is a crime so okay. so in, ending your own life now if you fail it's regarded as um sad it might be an, it might be an indication of mental illness although not always um it may be a cry for help but it's not a crime okay. now um so the, the problem though is suppose you get to the point where you are very ill and you say okay it's time for me to go i don't want to live any longer but you are so weak so sick that you just can't end your life you can't even crawl over to the edge of a high bridge and jump off you can't okay. you can't open a window and jump out the window a lot of people don't want to do that anyway because they're worried about landing on someone below and creating a mess and all that sort of stuff you might not own a gun so you can't shoot yourself um, you don't own any pills um, that you could end your own life with. And so they say, I need some help. I need help in order to end my own life. I would so end my life. get a nurse or a doctor to do it? Well, you get somebody else who you trust. Mm -hmm. That's what I think of when I think of uh, voluntary euthanasia. I think of somebody who would end their own life if they could. Yeah. But but they are too sick, too weak, or you know, some, some practical reason why they can't do it themselves, so they need assistance. Now, mm -hmm. under, under the current situation in Australia, um, anyone who gives that assistance, anyone who helps them to end their life, even by uh, you know, putting a bottle of, uh, of um, uh, some, some drug in their hand that, Rat that pills or something yeah something like that. even to that extent they, they can be prosecuted mm -hmm. in every state in australia now some mm -hmm. countries overseas that's not true but not many but the um my point is this that there's really no practical difference if you are uh, clear in your own head life is no longer worth living i don't want to live anymore if I was physically able to end my life, I would end it. Okay. And then somebody who cares for you compassionately says, I respect your decision. I'll help you to make that decision. That's, mm -hmm. what, I, that's what I call voluntary euthanasia. Or but it's not voluntary because you're, 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 you're guilting someone else into committing a crime. <laughs> that person now has that on their conscience. That's, 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 that's no. not fair. That's not fair to the other person. Well, they didn't. They didn't have to assist you to die, and the reason they're doing it um, because uh, the reason they're assisting you to die. First of mm. all, you're the one who's choosing to die, and they are the one choosing to help you to die. Now, in Victoria, now Victoria is still the only state where this is the case. Um, if you are seriously, you're a stupid bunch, and <laughs> if you are seriously ill and expected to die. I think it's within 12 months. If you are of, uh, make your intentions clear um, so that you're not confused, you're not um, demented, you're not mentally ill, you are clear about your decision. And I think it's two doctors or a doctor and a psychologist or somebody like that can mm -hmm. confirm that that is your case, then mm -hmm. you, can, you can be legally assisted to end your own life. I think that's a good thing. No, um, I think fair enough. Because to, if you say to somebody in that situation, no, we are not going to let you die, you are taking that per person's choice away from them. You are saying to them, we know better what's good for you than what you know for yourself. That's coercion. That's what libertarians do not approve of. Now, you might not make that same decision yourself, you might say, no, I cannot envisage any situation where I would want to end my own life. But nobody is asking you to. Nobody no, is I, I get. I understand the delineation between those, those two concepts. Like my dad has actually said something along those lines, which has freaked me out. He says, if I'm ever in a situation where I can't move and, and he goes, you, 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 you pull the plug. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. He goes, you do it. If you love me, you do it. And I'm like, I can't do that, dad. Like I'm pro-life. I can't 
turn you off. I love you. Like, but but his his thought is if he's useless, because as a man, my dad's in his seventies. If he's useless, he's not. What's the point in living? That's his sort of mentality. So, so I, I kind of get it. You will find that uh, over eighty percent of people his age, in fact, my age. I mean, I'm not quite seventy yet, but um, but people so you're not old enough to be my daddy. <laughs> So, uh, but you will find that more than 80% of people yeah. uh, in that age group, well over 80% of people in that age group, have the same opinion as your dad. Mm. Now, I, the, I, hey, I don't like that opinion, but he has it. Yeah. You might not like it, but I don't. Mm. You, you should think in terms of your dad, not yourself. Uh, you yeah. Think, think about your dad's point of view. If you're saying to your dad, no, I'm never going to help you do what you want to do yourself. You know, what do you call that? Is that help? I don't think so. And that's withholding. I, that's withholding from him something that he considers to be very important. But what is more important, my faith in Christ, the Ten Commandments, or my Father? God supersedes everything. And I know yeah. you don't get that because you're an atheist, but it, it does. That's just how it is. You're supposed to love God first then mum and dad and then everything, everything else. Like, do you know what I mean? I see but, where you're saying, and I come, I know I come off as super selfish and, and pontificating is the word that Dean uses to describe me sometimes. He says I'm pontificating. And I don't mean to be, and I hate that description about myself. But um, well, the language issue involved <coughs> uh, in that uh, the Ten Commandments were translated from Aramaic. They ended up in uh, thou, shalt uh, thou shalt not kill. Now, Which is, but that's wrong. It's actually thou shalt not murder. Yeah. So. Is that what you're about to say? Yes. Oh, but, well, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll stop yeah. talking. So the, the the question is whether helping somebody to to end their own life is murder. Now, I don't think most people would regard that as murder. So I don't think the Ten Commandments do actually say to you, you're not allowed to help your father. In fact, I would think um, the Bible, which I know fairly well because I had a Christian education, um, mm -hmm. would, would say to you um, that the compassion of Christ means that you should be compassionate towards your father if that is his genuine, le legitimate uh, wish. Uh, as long as he's not demented, as long as he's not pressured, as long as it's a voluntary, um, rational choice, uh, dear, I do not want to go on anymore, life is not worth living, I need your assistance. I think God would say to you, um, your, your compassion towards your father would lead you to not refuse him. Well, you're not allowed to presume what God would think because you forsook him. <laughs> I don't think he would say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's written clearly in black and white in the Bible. So, um, what does it say in the Bible, though? Thou shalt not kill. Well, okay. that's that's the main that's the main one I can come from. But um, you know what though, you're if I if I look at it from the it also says honor thy mother and thy father. Yes. And that could be a contradiction to what we're talking. So that's a good counter argument for me going against myself. Yes, that's right. See, and, and I can be neutral. I, I can see it from the other perspective. I'm trying. I'm trying. Good. All right. Yeah. That's that's the euthanasia argument. Now. Hmm. Um, you you um, uh, you also mentioned abortion. So abortion. I did, but but you and I both acknowledge that that was two people. Yeah, so that's two people. So you can't. Yes, yes, it is. You can't um, uh, treat that in the same um, breath as as euthanasia. It's a really much more complex issue. And the question, and are you pro life? Are you a pro life libertarian? You have to. You, you or have are you a pro choice libertarian? You have to. They're not even as simple as that. They okay. are. Okay. Okay. So um, the, the thing about it is that um, a woman has a right to choose what happens in her own body. Um, so so that's, that's where the choice argument is. But she also doesn't have a right to kill another person. So that's where the pro-life argument comes in. Where's the trade-off between the two? Your, well, your rights are forfeited. The second that baby enters your body, your rights are forfeited. That is my response to what you're saying. But sorry, keep going. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's obviously a matter for debate. Um, so the the um, the libertarian 
uh, position is is all over the place on this. There is no single. Oh no, I know. I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. you libertarians are a crazy lot. No. Well, that too, but um, <laughs> some things are more crazy than others. But and also, you're one of the thinner ones. Why are so many libertarians overweight? <laughs> so mean. I'm being so mean right yeah. now. I'm so sorry. I don't anyway. hate libertarians, but you, a lot of you are overweight. Really? Uh huh. Never... You're all intellectual. You're all super smart and intellectual, just um, I, surprising, I think... surprisingly heavy. Well, the interesting thing from my point of view is I think libertarian women are more, more attractive than uh, when, uh, other women, especially Greens women, when you, they're way in front of Greens women. But even what about, women, what about traditional Christians? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the one interviewing you. I should be complimented. No, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so on the abortion, keep going, issue, sorry. <laughs> um, you won't find a, a unified um, libertarian position. It's a it's no, a it's a topic on which libertarians will fight. Some some will take the. 100% uh, pro-life. Some will some will take the 100% pro-choice position. My own position is that if the baby is viable, if it can live outside the mother, um, then the mother has no right to kill it. Um, but up to that point, the mother has a right to decide um, what is in her body. So she has control over her own, her own body. That's the same argument I was describing to you before. That's my I that's my own personal view, but yeah. um, I I don't pretend to be speaking for libertarians. You speak uh, for yourself on this issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the that's what I like. What you just said just then, it's really funny because um, someone may choose to be a conservative, someone may choose to be a lefty, someone may choose to be a libertarian, conservative, yeah. lefty, and with each of those things, you still hold your own opinion. But if you align with that particular party, you're evil for all of these reasons, even though your opinion may differ to someone else on something. Like, um, have you heard of that of that uh, beautiful commentator, Tommy Laren, that blonde girl? Say that again. There's a, there's a blonde American named Tommy Laren. She's beautiful. She's like 25 um, and she's conservative, Christian. She, she has a, a segment called Final Thoughts. Have you ever heard no. of it? Okay. No, I don't. Well, she, she came out a couple of years ago and said on The View, you know the show The View? Yes. Yeah, so she, she was on The View as a Christian and all that, but she said she was pro-choice. And I remember thinking, she's pro-choice? That's weird. And all of these, um, all of these conservatives, right-wingers, piled on her. And I don't like pylons. I never have. As, as, as a common target and as a common, so as, as a person who's often piled on, I don't pile on. I, I try not to. And so I didn't comment on it and I waited, I waited a couple of weeks and I realized that her opinion was that the government has no place in a woman's body. So she, she for that reason and that reason alone, because she's a constitutionalist, she, she is pro-choice. However, her opinion is yours that, um, you know, if, 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 if the child is too young and having a baby um, or, or, or the baby, yeah, basically she's a pro-choice, pro-lifer, I think is what she said. Which doesn't sound right, but it does make sense if you if you, if you watch her on on Stephen Crowder. Anyway, so long story short, um, I I was uh, she's still technically a conservative via that one difference, and so you as a libertarian obviously have your own opinion. God forbid, um, you don't align with with every single thing. And Dean gets Dean McRae crops a lot of that too. It's like because he's a libertarian. He must automatically, you know, want babies killed up to the ninth month and must love drugs and want to do cocaine and all that kind of stuff. And um, people people are different. People align with a party, but that doesn't mean they are everything that party represents. And it, I feel like people are retarded and don't, don't really know that you can well, you can be different to the party that you've aligned or assigned yourself to. So I like yeah. that you said that. Yeah, well, what are your thoughts on what I said? Respect. Respecting the fact that other people have different opinions and that opinions mm -hmm. are not facts no. is, I mean, acknowledging that, acknowledging that uh, opinions are not facts and that mm -hmm. other people have opinions that might differ from yours is actually a sign of being a grown-up person. Oh, and yes. I have to say that on a relatively small um, uh, group 
a proportion of the right wing side of politics is not grown up and quite oh, a large, absolutely. quite a large proportion of the left wing side of politics is not grown up absolutely. And, we, and we see that on where we were discussing last night on twitter it's it's relatively uncommon. the best place in the world mm. it's relatively uncommon to have a rational debate with somebody there with whom you disagree um whereas uh it's much more common to have you know abuse flying backwards and forwards and rude names and i mean because i've got quite a high number of followers on twitter and i yes thank you for sharing this interview <laughs> we have over 30 viewers yeah i'm forever uh, being caught up in uh conversations and i have to mute mute conversations on twitter because people are abusing each other backwards and forwards backwards and forwards sometimes it goes on for 20 or so um uh 20 or so um exchanges and i get copied in on them all and it's rarely is it friendly or constructive but that's just the tip of the iceberg i mean the the treatment of trump and his supporters by mm. the democrats um by the antifa by the black lives matter people and all of the you know the non-trumpers the never trumpers the anti-trumpers the ones with trump derangement syndrome yeah um, is an absolute classic example of um people who've never grown up they're not interested in debating what's about what it is about trump they don't like what they think he should have done better um all they want to do is be rude about him the other end of the spectrum there are some people and those people who give you a hard time about libertarians and about uh, abortion and drugs and so forth they similarly haven't grown up they they need to accept that they have an opinion other people might have a different opinion and they are not the same as facts facts mm -hmm. are, facts are confirmed um you can't have your own facts but you can absolutely have your own opinions yes. that's now in in um in parliament i mean i spent five years in parliament and most of the politicians Lovely. most of the politicians in the, in the federal parliament do get that so you hear a wide range of opinions um and uh people disagreeing with within parties and particularly between parties across mm. the chamber from the opposition to the government side and the group that can't cope with that very well um more than any other group is the greens they do Easily. not they do not get the fact um now that's not all of them there are you know occasionally um examples of, of being grown up people but um far more than any other party they are um, inclined to resort to name calling mm. um, to characterize somebody who with whom they disagree as a bad person simply mm -hmm. that they disagree with them um, to question their motives um, to say things like who's paying you um, as if you know somehow you're being bought off um, that sort of nonsense is not grown-up behavior it's childish and it's stupid um, but it's it's particularly common and it's actually getting worse um, in social media Facebook and Twitter in particular, but there are others as well. I'd say Facebook is worse than Twitter, but that's just me. I've been yeah. banned on Facebook like 50 times. Have you really? <laughs> For yeah. real, like, oh, like seven times, but yeah, a lot. Yeah. Because you know how I'm so dangerous, David. Like, you have no idea. You're talking to a dangerous dissident. I can tell just looking at you how dangerous you are. <laughs> 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 and so, I mean, what they've done is brought out the. Um, I suppose the the right to be obnoxious um, over opinions. Uh -huh. and where, what they ought to be doing is bringing out a quest for facts. Um, and so, every now and then on Facebook and and more often on Twitter, well, I look at Twitter more than I do on Facebook. I must confess. So I'm perhaps, starting to as well. Mm -hmm. um, prefer Twitter. Prefer Twitter. Let's, over, let's let's talk about uh, COVID, for example. Mm -hmm. you will occasionally get debates there between um, knowledgeable people about things like the efficacy of face masks vaccines mm -hmm. vaccine is likely whether herd immunity can be achieved without a vaccine 
-hmm. and, and those are interesting debates. I've been involved in some myself. You know, I'm, I used to be a veterinarian and I vaccinated Oh, yes, more. I knew that. Yeah. I, I vaccinated more animals than, uh, than most people have had hot dinners. And, you know, I've dealt with, dealt with epidemics and things like that in, amongst animals. So, um, so I was always interested in these sort of debates and every now and then you, you find them occurring on Twitter and occasionally on Facebook and they're fascinating. And yet, you know, in between all of that, you've got to put up with so much nonsense and so much rude, uh, rudeness and even amongst the scientists. Um, so sometimes if you go back to them and question them and say, okay, um, you say that, but somebody else says so-and-so, well, what's your reason for saying so? They will respond with something to the effect of, what would you know, you're a dickhead. And uh, <laughs> yeah. what does that effect, you know? And so... Doesn't help yeah. Not, yeah. No, I mean, the debate isn't not, not moved on. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and you, you, know, you end up uh, muting that person or whatever. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an interesting state of affairs. Um, it's it's a problem on both sides of politics. Yes, uh, it is. I'm so glad you said that. People think that the right, the, the right, the right wing is so perfect, and like, and that, that left is so evil. Both sides are full of morons. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. I think the left is uh, is worse. But oh yes, yes, I agree. I will always agree with that. People think I've become a centrist. I am not a centrist. I, I I I am not. I'm definitely not on the far right, and I'm not on the left. I just don't want. To associate with any of the spectrum because it keeps changing do you know that like i probably in the 1960s would have been a democrat for jfk now yeah. like it's just it's it's i can't deal with it anyway sorry keep going yeah yeah yes well you're absolutely right and i mean uh -huh. I, my first political party i joined was the labor party there you uh, go see it just yeah that's insane same story but the labor you party seem stupid to me no <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but the Labor Party's changed. Um, it's unrecognisable from, uh -huh. uh, from what it was when I joined it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, in fact, that's now become a debate within the Labor Party. So Joel Fitzgibbon is, yeah. um, has a view or a, a, you know, a vision of the Labor Party being closer to what it used to be. And the That'll issue never happen. It'll never happen again. Yeah, that what well, it might, but you reckon? It might, but I I mean if they keep losing elections, uh, which they at the level they like keep doing, um, you know, somebody with enough political smarts might say, you know, we can't keep doing this, we've got to change what we're doing, otherwise we're we're never gonna uh, make a difference. So and that's Joel Fitzgibbon's argument that Labour keeps okay. losing because They've moved, moved too far away from what they used to stand for, which is the ordinary person, the worker, um, you know, the people who um, needed a hand up from time to time um, and and the safety net, you know, benefited from the safety net. You know, um, I have no qualms with, with most of those things. As I said, I joined Labor, um, uh, you know, back in the days of Gough Whitlam. Oh, and in the 70s. Yes, in the I was stealing my daddy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> we won't go there. No, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, okay, sorry. I just wanted I wanted to say that um, I like you. So, uh, um, what? Tell me, just because I've interrupted you again. Uh, I was to hold on to that thought because I don't want you to forget what you what you were about to say. I only, as of last year, stopped identifying as a conservative. I even made a video saying, am I a conservative? Because when I did my research on the Australian mainstream conservative party, which is the Liberal Party, I realised that that was the party that introduced abortion, which I hate. That was the party that legalised traditional um, biblical, uh, non-biblical marriage between uh, two men and two women. Um, so how can how could I identify with a, with a party like the Liberal Party and call myself a conservative? I'm not a conservative. So that's why I just say now I'm a Christian and right leaning. Those mm -hmm. are the words that, that those are the only two words I have. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, sorry. So what was it for you? What was your little epiphany? Mine was that research. What was your epiphany that took you out of labor into being a libertarian liberal Democrat? Yeah, so that was that was uh, a bit of a protest. Um, mm -hmm. I 
I, I know for the left of the Labor Party for a while, I, um, yeah. you know, there's an old saying that if you're not a socialist at 20, you've got no heart. But if you're oh. still a but if you're still a socialist at 40, you've got no brains. So at 20, I had a heart. So I decided socialism was a kind, nice thing to do because it shared everything around. Oh, aren't you beautiful? And it was, you know, it was the nice thing to do. And and yeah. I was I, had, I was at university and I had um, uh, a number of friends who were socialists, so they, they sort of made it sound nice as well. Um, then so... Uh, I sort of was vaguely lefty in the Labor Party, but mm. um, not in any sort of doctrinaire fashion. Then I travelled overseas in my 20s and I went to Russia and then I... Uh, oh, nice! And, well, the Soviet Union it was in those days and some other yeah. Eastern European countries. And then I travelled enormously through Africa, including a number of countries that regarded themselves as socialists. And finally ended up in apartheid South Africa. So oh, this nice. Was, this is interesting. I'm loving this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During the period when South Africa had yeah, yeah. big separation between the black and the white races. Yeah, so what, silly. The, the lesson that I learned from that was all of the socialist or communist, whatever you want to call them, um, countries were poor. The people were poor. They were miserable. They were unhappy because they were poor. They didn't have enough to eat. It was apartheid socialism? No, no. So yeah. I'm getting to that. Sorry, so sorry, then, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll stop. So then I got right down through Africa and seeing a number of socialist countries along the way. And I suppose Tanzania was was a classic example. They had what they called village socialism. And that was oh. another word for all being very poor and having not enough to eat, as far as I could see. So then I got to South Africa and... Apartheid was horrible. The, you know, the fact that they were treating um, so many people uh, um, so distinctly just simply because of their race was yeah. abhorrent. It's they ridiculous. Had, they had separate buses for black people and white people. They had separate bus stops for black and white people. They had separate public toilets for black and white people. At the post offices, there was a door for the black people and a door for the white people. And if you walked in, to the post office, there might be a queue of 50 people, black people, lining up at the black at the black entrance, and one person, me, would walk into the post office and they'd stop serving the black people and serve me. It was oh, just wow. just it was absolutely awful. But what stood out to me was that economically, even the black people that were subjected to you know that horrible system. They were economically far better, uh, doing far better than they were doing than the black people who in the other countries that mm. were that were called socialist. That was that was difficult for me to get my head around. So here we have black people who are uh, being treated appallingly by their government in a very very um, degrading system, and yet they had a capitalist, mostly capitalist economy. And uh, and they were doing economically far far better. So I had to get my head around that. And I spent three years travelling the world. I came back and um, to Australia and decided that perhaps after all that, I wasn't all that left wing either. Good story. And, and uh, um, but then I joined the Liberal Party some some years later, and then they introduced uh, 1997 came along. And the Port Arthur massacre, and we had the John Howard gun laws. Guns. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm a supporting shooter. I thought the gun laws were the most abominable um, imposition on uh, innocent people uh, that was possible to imagine. Um, so I was absolutely, absolutely repulsed by them. Plus, I mean, by that stage, um, I, I was no great fan of the Liberal Party. I was only in it for a very little while. Mm. Just, Years, but but I was pretty much put off by uh, by what I heard while I was in it. But I also and so I was moving very closely or very much towards um, libertarian values. And if you believe the government is too big and too too controlling, too mm -hmm. you know telling you what to do, 
Mm -hmm. The idea that the government should have all the guns and you shouldn't have and the people shouldn't have any is just absolutely contrary to to the idea that the government should be your servant, not your master. You know, the old uh, Thomas Jefferson, when the government fears the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. And if the government's got all the guns and the people don't have the guns, um, it's only a matter of time before there is tyranny. And every single uh, dictatorship, uh, every single mass murder uh, during the 20th century was preceded by gun control. So it's not a theory that I'm talking about. This is practi practical freedom uh, supported by history. And uh, so um, I'm a sporting shooter, so I shoot for sport. Um, but I also strongly believe that it is totally immoral for the government to disarm um, uh, law-abiding or innocent people who are doing no harm. It's, Absolutely. it's important to keep the guns out of the hands of dangerous people. I have no problems with that. So people who've committed violent crimes, who, who are violent in any sort of way, mentally unsound, got no problems with keeping the guns out of the hands of those sort of people. Mm -hmm. But no, not most people aren't in those categories and they are the ones who should be left alone. And, and yet the gun laws are... Um, you know, basically a license to harass people who liked shooting for a sport. And so that was a very major issue in my, um, in my, in my politics. So after the Labor Party, uh, after the Liberal Party, I moved to the Shooters Party. But it turned, ah. out, it not, it turned out not to be libertarian either. Um, so, no, they're more conservative, I think. Yeah, they're quite conservative. And uh, so that's where I ended up with the Liberal Democratic Party, which is which is a liberal, uh, a libertarian party. Mm, and the only, the only, I think Australia has the world record, I believe, and I could be wrong, for having the most libertarian candidates in Parliament at a time. My something like that. Well, there's not much competition. Like. Not much competition for that. Um, <laughs> the Libertarian Party. Well, that's partly because of the system, but. Um, the Libertarian Party in America has, mm. uh, uh, I think they've got one person in the State House, they've got some very, very relatively low level positions, but they, they have a first past the post voting system um, like the UK does. Now first, they don't have, so they don't have preferential systems. And, okay. Um, so really, really hard for any party other than the Republicans and the Democrats to win a seat in America. Uh -huh. The UK is not a lot different, um, although they do have a little bit more of a history with minor parties, but it's essentially the Conservative Party or the Labor Party um, that determine who the government is. And then you get uh, parties like, uh, well, there's Liberal Democrats in, in the UK, although they're different from our party. Um, UKIP, uh, the anti-Brexit poll, the Brexit Party and those sort of things, but they they really struggle to um, win seats. UKIP, I've heard of UKIP. Um, who is in that? Can you sorry just refresh my brain? Yeah. Well, so uh, Nigel Farage. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was that. I just didn't want to say it out yeah. loud because it was wrong. Yeah. He was the leader of it. I don't think he's associated with it anymore because Brexit has been achieved. Germany does have. Um, the it hasn't been achieved. Has it been manifested physically? Brexit, no. So, no, so it hasn't been achieved. They're still negotiating the free trade agreement. They have until <laughs> the end of December to, to negotiate that. Um, Germany has the Free Democrats, um, uh, which they they describe themselves as a classical liberal party, which is comparable to liber, uh, libertarianism. And um, so they've won a few seats. And in New Zealand, they have the ACT Party, which is more or less libertarian, and okay. I think I think they won. Now that's I should know that. Um, but we've had more. Australia a, has had the most in Parliament at one time than Congress has had. I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, than the US, absolutely. We have three. Well, at we, one stage there was me in the Senate, and we had um, uh, Aaron Aaron Stonehouse in Western Australia. David Limbrick and Tim Quilty, both in the Victorian Parliament. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah. I think Australia has, has been more successful with the libertarianism. That was my point. Sorry, you were talking about New Zealand. Yeah, it was four of us. But New Zealand, at the last uh, uh, elections in New Zealand, 
the ACT Party won a pile of seats. I'm just trying to think. I think it's six or seven seats. And uh, and the ACT Party in New Zealand is basically libertarian as well. So uh, they're doing pretty well over there. Good Although to hear. it's just recent that they've done that well. Mm. All right. So someone named Grab some Grab Trucks wants to know. Ask uh, David whether he knows what all these CCTV cameras going up all over the Gold Coast are. At least every five hundred meters on the on the M1 and at loads of side streets. Do you know anything on that? Nope. Don't know why he, he thought you might, but okay. No. Um, the the, um, the uh, Queensland government and the uh, Gold Coast councils have a history of not being um, transparent. Yeah, not being either transparent or very much in favour of individual freedom and rights. So Evidently. Whatever it is, I suspect it's sinister. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so Jack Darby, I want to know what the difference between libertarian and an individualist as opposed to adherent classical liberal like that from the British political thinker Locke. So what's the difference between a libertarian and an individualist? Because I think of myself as an individualist. I hate collectivization, even though I do it. Everyone does it. Like, you can't help it. But on an individual level, person to person, I don't do it. And individualism is not really a political philosophy. It's, it's, no. just, um, it's just, you know, um, I like to worry about myself and other people worry about themselves. Libertarian is liberalism, classical liberalism, and libertarianism are pretty much the same thing. Um, you, you know, you can get into arguments about that, but they really are at the very margins of uh, of those two philosophies. Okay. Uh, but it's interesting that that question raises uh, Locke, John Locke. This is one of John Locke is one of my favourite philosophers, and and I like to compare him with another famous philosopher. Both live within the sort of the same era in from Scotland, they're part of the Scottish Enlightenment, uh, okay. Thomas, Thomas Hobbes. Okay, I have heard of him. Yeah, so a lot of people will know of at least one uh, saying by Thomas Hobbes who says that life is nasty, brutish and short. Oh. His view is that in nature, humans are always at war. They're always fighting and they, they do not find any peace. And that the only way to maintain a civilised society is for the government to impose it, basically. And the government takes away all your rights, owns all your rights, and gives them back to you um, as it chooses. And if it chooses not to give them to you, that's it's entitled to do that. Now, um, so that that basically is the philosophy that the government can do whatever it likes, Mm. And, and so they're doing it now that's right so it can lock you up because of a disease it can stop you traveling from state to state mm. um, it can take away all your guns it can um, stop you using the internet it can do whatever it likes so that's that's the john Locke approach and it it is based on the on the um principle that if you don't have governments with with these powers you end up with um war anarchy basically people all fight anarchy is a good thing if it's capitalistic yeah so john locke's uh, uh, yeah john locke's view which is what the question mentioned had mm -hmm. a completely different philosophy he says that um humans actually get along quite well together and that they work and they create um uh wealth through their work and and that but um, and they're essentially harmonious. But in order to um, create a society that respects property and you, you build up property through work. Libertarianism. No, no. You need a government. And mm. the, gov the, the role of the government is to protect property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so as a, as a way of protecting property, creating a civilised society, it... Um, takes away some of your rights or some of your freedoms. So helping yourself to other people's property, for example, the government says you can't do that. But they um, can. Yeah. Well, the go yeah, well, that's true, yes, but let's not, let's go down that path. Sorry, moment. rabbit hole. But the, the idea is that you have inherent rights 
you have the right to life, to liberty, to property. Um, you have the right of religion, of association, movement, those sorts of things. Now, the government might at any particular time say, well, I'm going to put limits on those rights for a particular purpose. And you might say, OK, I'll go along with that. But if you don't, or if most people say, well, that's gone too far, you've taken too many of our rights away from us, we have the right to claim them back again. Now, Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the um, <coughs> American Declaration of Independence, was a fan of John Locke. So you will read in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. That they Under are, God. That's right. They are grand, given God. They have God-given rights, which are the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. Now, John Locke said you have the right of life, liberty, and private property. But, you know, let's not quibble about these things. So it, what, what Locke said was you have these rights. They are God-given or they're natural or you're born with them. Whatever source you like, you prefer, but they didn't come from the government. All the government can do is put limits on them, take them away. And if, if, you, if they're taken away from you and you don't like that um, and, and you want to claim them back again, that's within your rights as well. Um, now, um, I happen to believe that, that that's quite legitimate. I, and, and so does the, the American Constitution is based on that. The American Declaration of Independence is based on that. The idea that your rights come from the government, though, is it derives from Thomas Hobbes, and you will hear it a lot. And a good example of that is owning a gun is a privilege, okay? It's a privilege. You don't have a right to own a gun unless the government privileges you by allowing you to do that. Now, that is the Thomas Hobbes approach. The John Locke approach would be, I do have a right to own a gun. The government has to justify um, taking it away from me. Now, that might there might be a legitimate justification for taking it from you. You might be a dangerous person. You might be mentally unsound. Uh, you might look not look after it um, from being stolen or something like that. Even I handled a gun once. I was Did with you? Jim Savage. Do you know okay. who Jim Savage is? Yeah, I fainted. <laughs> so I should have. I should have a gun. <laughs> yes. Well. It's pathetic. I am. But anyway, sorry, keep going. It's a, it's a gap in your education if you don't know how to shoot a gun. Really. <laughs> anyway. I'll do it again. I'll do it again and I'll make sure I have food and water in my system rather than how I went out that day. Sorry, keep going. Yeah. I'll start off with a small one, not a big one as well. <laughs> yeah. a bad effect on you. But anyway, my yeah. point is, is that's, I mean, it, it, all sorts of things, not just gun laws, come into this category. So if you work from the assumption that you have a right to do anything but the government can um, stop you from doing some of those things um, for a legitimate reason what is a legitimate reason and that's where the philosophy of john stuart mill comes in who is the father of liberalism liberalism in the old sense of the word he said that the government has no right to um, place impositions on you unless it is to protect the rights of other people. So if you are um, only doing something um, which might harm yourself, the government has no right to impose. If you are doing something which will harm somebody else, then the government is entitled to step in and either limit it or stop you from doing it, depending on what it is. Um, I think it's a pretty good philosophy. The government should leave you alone unless it is to protect other people. And um, if, if our governments in Australia and other governments in the rest of the world were um, followed that philosophy, they would be close enough to libertarianism for me to hang up my spurs and decide I don't need to be involved in politics anymore. Mm, that's what I like about you. That's what I like about Dean. That's what I like about Ricardo Bossi. None of you want to do it. None of you want to be in politics. But you do it because it's so full of dickheads, and yeah. and only only and only people who are not careerist politicians are the people that I would, I don't know if the word is trust, but would would um, happily vote for. Those yeah. are the people. Like I I would only vote for non-career politicians, which is why I like Trump, which is why I liked Dr. Ben Carson, which is why um, 
Australia needs more more men who are not uh, career politicians. Like Pauline Hanson wasn't a politician; she owned a fish and chip shop. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So the 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 um, there's a career politicians raise all sorts of other issues as well, um, and that is that um, they are they're treating it like a job, and it's it's not a job; it's public service. You are there for the benefit of the public. When you are no longer helping the public, you shouldn't be there anymore. And in in some and there's, you can get into arguments about um, how much should a politician be paid. We in, in Australia pay our politicians extremely well, but in the state of New Hampshire, for example, in America, um, they don't get any pay at all, and they only get an allowance for expenses, nothing else. And they are expected to have another job. They're expected to um, uh, do their political stuff, basically, in their spare time. That used to be the way that we did it in Australia with the legislative councils, the upper houses. Um, they were expected, uh, the, the, the members of the legislative councils in the state governments were expected to have um, other work, other jobs. A lot of them were farmers and business people and that sort of thing. And so uh, the hours that th those legislative councils now sit, the days they sit, the weeks, you know, their schedules and so forth, are somewhat of a legacy of the time when um, the, the politicians who sat in those houses were part-timers. Mm. I, th I think part-time politicians, people who have a life outside of parliament... More is, trustworthy. Well, I, I think it's highly desirable. You should... Yeah. You shouldn't treat the job of being an elected politician as <clears throat> as your job because you don't it's want to about get about status though and classism. You don't well, you don't you don't want to get fired, so you do anything to keep the job. You need mm -hmm. the money, you got a mortgage to pay, you got bills uh, to cover, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you need the job. So you do what you have to do to keep the job. Whereas if you are a part time politician, if you really don't need the job because you have, you know, another another source of income, you do the job because you believe you are making a difference. Absolutely. You know, once, once you stop making a difference, when you when you think this is no longer um, um, any good, I can't I can't do anything here, then you bail out. And I have to say that was pretty much my situation. I got to the mm -hmm. point where I thought I'm I'm not making much of a difference here. I think I can probably do a better job. Uh, make a bigger difference in the state parliament. And uh, I ran for New South Wales, but in the end, I didn't get elected, as as everybody knows. Fair enough. Um, Pissy leaks. Pete, question for David: If you take the jab, you can't work, eat, and etc. Thereby to surpass the system, do you believe barter trade will be the uh, only currency available? So he's talking about obviously the vaccine and 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 the the implications of of the future regarding that. Like we probably, won't even be able, we probably won't even be able to eat at restaurants. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, respond, respond. There's a fair amount of speculation about what, how much coercion will be applied. And if, if you've been listening to this all the way through, you will know my attitude to coercion. Um, I, libertarians are opposed to coercion. So I, I, I am not, I intend to get vaccinated. I'm a big believer in vaccination. Um, I have vaccinated tens of thousands of animals. I've had pretty much every vaccination, every vaccine going uh, for people my age. Um, that, but that you I chose think. that. You chose all of that. None of that was none of that was forced on me. No. So so the question then is okay, so <clears throat> if if there are a lot of organizations and companies that are as stupid as Qantas and says <clears throat> if you don't have a vaccination we're not going to provide you with our services. They are stupid. Mm. Yeah, I think they are very stupid. Qantas is, has a history of being extremely stupid. Israel for Lao. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, lots of lots of issues. So what what will you be able to do? I, I, it's a bit difficult for me to at this stage to um, to say. Um, I hope that the people that they do that to. Who the ones who refuse to get vaccinated and they try to punish them, I hope they're rich because obviously those people will not um, 
take their business to all those organisations that uh, indeed. That play. And I hope that the market um, punishes them. I, I hope that's the case. God willing, I really agree with that so bad, and I I hope that yeah. yeah I but I, that too. I I do fear that it, it is going to get a bit ugly, and um, there's going to be more Qantas's being stupid, and you know I. As I said, I am in favour of vaccination. I won't refuse to be vaccinated for COVID because, although I'll be happier when there's a you know 10 million Poms and and Yanks have been vaccinated before me, just just in case something goes wrong. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Such a marker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I don't want to ex experiment too much, but no, um, I agree but though, I, yeah. I do intend to get vaccinated. I, I, you know, I don't have any fears about it. Um, but really, I, I sorry, I, I have to cut you off. There's b dead baby fetal. Uh, there's male baby dead dead babies in there for one. And um, uh, oh, I, I know more. I just I'm not coming off as very articulate right now. It, it's I don't think it's safe. And also, you're not a Christian, so you don't believe in the mark of the beast. But It'll change your DNA. Anyway, sorry, keep going. No, it won't, it won't do any of those things. Um, you don't know that. Well, we do pretty much. The vaccine, well, no. the vaccine has been administered to tens of thousands of people already in the UK and the USA, and none of those things have occurred. They're they, werewolves now. You just don't realise them. <laughs> they've, uh, you know, they've had sore arms. Some of them have had a temperature for... Uh, for uh, a few hours, okay. um, a few aches and pains, but you get that from the flu vaccine. Um, yes, yes. I, I get a flu vaccine every year, and my arm is sore, and sometimes I run a bit of a fever for um, for a few hours afterwards, and go to bed early that night. So, um, but and those things have been reported from the uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. I'm not sure if if this. I, I expect it'll be the same with the. Um, the Oxford vaccine that the um, has been developed in the UK, so um, so you'll ha you'll have those things to expect, but okay. beyond that, um, the only thing really that that could go wrong is that you'll be in the five percent that it won't protect, <clears throat> and that you will still catch COVID, notwithstanding the fact that you've been vaccinated. Now, um, I'll take my chances on that. I'm 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 inclined to believe that I'll be in the 95% where it works and that if the virus comes along, um, <clears throat> it, it might get up my nose, but it won't cause a disease. And that's, that's the purpose of the, uh, of the vaccine. So I, I, you know, I'm happy to, uh, happy to be vaccinated. What I won't be happy about though. Is if it's coerced. If it's forced. So if, if, if they are saying to people, you are not allowed to go into a post office or you're not allowed to go into a bank or, or um, you're not allowed to go into a restaurant or anything like that without mm. being vaccinated. Um, I will join with the people who refuse to get vaccinated and I will take my money away as well. And be just simply because I don't approve of coercion and, um, and the market should make those people who try to impose coercion pay a heavy price for, for doing so. It should be voluntary, optional. They should convince us to get vaccinated. As I said, I don't need convincing. People like you do need convincing and they should set out to convince you. They should set out to, to reassure people like you um, that it's safe, it won't hurt you, and it might <clears throat> it'll protect you from getting the disease, COVID, and it's unlikely someone your age would get sick from it, but um, it may do, it, some do, a few do your age, and it uh, it also How old do you will... think I am? <laughs> I'm not going there either. <laughs> One, I... It's not. It's not my. I'm not in my twenties. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah, I'm, I am way too old to go guessing the age of women. Way too old. <laughs> it's just I wouldn't have been offended either way. But um, so you, you're you're. <laughs> You're getting the vaccine. You, you, you've you already decided, even though you don't know all the ingredients, or have you researched ingredients? Have you already done all of that uh, that, that background research as well? Because no, if you well, had, you know that it does have the component of dead um, male fetal tissue in there. Um, 
Which it one? does. It just does. Oh, I don't know which one. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's the American one. I don't know if it's the Israeli one. I don't know which specific one it is. Yeah. No. Well, I don't. You're right. There's like 25 different types being made. You're so. Yeah. You're right. I'm pretty sure neither of the two American ones, the Moderna and the Pfizer one, they they are messenger RNA. They're proteins. They don't need to grow them in a biological medium. And uh, so I'd be pretty confident in saying. There's no fetal cells being used in either of those two vaccines. The Oxford one is a more traditional vaccine, and it may be, that's it, AstraZeneca, Oxford, yeah. Um, that one is a more traditional vaccine, like, like many other vaccines on the market. It may have some biological component, but um, I don't know. Mm. No, neither do I. Does anyone else have any more questions? Oh, okay, here's one from Goats and Hose. <laughs> Uh, how how can we determine long term effects of a vaccine that took less than eight months to make? Yeah, well, that's a fair question, and I th I think the uh, the government and the manufacturers and the scientific community have an obligation to answer that question and anything else that comes up. Um, there th there is plenty of science on their side. Um, they they use it. Uh, they do trials in people and they know what goes into it okay and they know what those things do in the body mm -hmm. um, this, the intention is to stimulate um, t-cell immunity plus antibody production um, and they, they don't put anything else into it unless it's to help with those two tasks um, so there's it's, it's not as if it's a uh, a cocktail of you know 50 different uh, herbs and spices it's it's relatively stripped down um, with known components in it but um, and vaccines have a very long history I mean we've been using vaccines now for well over a century I mean we we eliminated smallpox from the world we eradicated we, yeah. with a vaccine <clears throat> polio is you know, not the, the scourge it was um, of uh, 75 years ago when it was killing people and crippling people because of vaccine. Um, even things like dipset, diphtheria and whooping whooping cough used to be really, really bad problems, and they're mm. not because of vaccines. We know about vaccines. Um, we did. I, I think it used to be a noble industry, but it's so lowly become an evil industry. But anyway, that's just me. Keep <coughs> Well, um, no, I, I see no evidence that it's that it's evil. Um, there is. Uh, uh, I think dead babies is okay. Well, where are the dead babies from vaccines? I don't have enough information to answer. I just know that there are dead babies. Shut up. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'll send you. I'll send you a couple of messages after we're done because I have the paperwork. I just I have the screenshots that were sent to me by Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, who is an expert on that topic. All right. Okay. Sorry, keep going. Anyway, so long-term effects, um, um, much more likely with uh, with uh, pharmaceuticals drugs, mm. so blood pressure, anti-cancer drugs. Mm. Anti-cancer drugs are notorious for having side effects, long-term effects. Um, uh, some some drugs, not many, it must be said, but some, they don't even show up with their side effects for a year or two or three years. Um, so um, as you can argue that the vaccine might be in the same situation as those very small number of pharmaceuticals that have effects which don't show up for a year or two years or three years like that. And, and probably some people will be worried about those sorts of things that they will refuse to be vaccinated until mm -hmm. 90% of the rest of the world's been vaccinated. And I mean, I think it's that's their right. I actually think that's their right to hold back until they're satisfied. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't have any problem with that. All I'm saying is I will make a personal choice to be vaccinated when it's available in Australia. And it's quite likely I'll be one of the um, early ones because the government thinks people my age are um, uh, for some reason or other crocs or whatever. Um, so, um, uh, the likelihood is that uh, that I'll be one of the early ones who get it anyway. 
Um, I get flee, uh, free flu vaccines every year because I'm over the threshold age for that the government thinks that um, um, for some reason, which I think is bizarre, that somebody uh, my age should get a free vaccination. Oh, you don't like the charity? <laughs> I don't need it. You know, I don't need it. And that's, yeah. that's what pisses me off. I'm not poor. Um, if, uh, if they're going to give away other people's money, and that's what's happening, they should give it to people who need it, not people like me. I don't mm. need. I don't need free free things. You know, um, the the funny thing is, even the clinic, the uh, the, um, the medical clinic that I go to, um, they bulk bill when I go there. And when I say, "Why don't you charge me a normal fee?" No, uh, everybody your age, we bulk bill them. The assumption being that um, once you reach a certain age, you must be poor. So it's a ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I agree with your analysis there. Um, then, I'm getting a couple of questions from the audience. Um, someone wants to know what you think of Black Lives Matter and someone else wants to know what you think about cryptocurrency. Okay, so Black Lives Matter is um, uh, a proxy, basically, for anti-capitalist um, uh -huh. destruction. Uh -huh. uh, they are... Uh, um, whether they say they are or not, they're fundamentally um, socialist, but not in the not in the traditional Marxist-Leninist or even Maoist socialist sense, but certainly in the tear down capitalism and hope that something is better um, to replace it. Um, and it's a it's a destructive um, um, approach, really. I mean, they Absolutely. they they um, uh, it's it's based on this on an anti-capitalist uh, philosophy and and it's also um well i mean i think it's racist even though it's purportedly, purportedly anti-racist if if you only look at a person's color and make decisions about them based on that color that's racism and Easily. It's, it is exactly the difference the difference the opposite of what martin luther king said he said, I have a dream that one, by, one day my four little children will be judged by the content of their character, not the colour of their skin. So what, yes. is, what is Black Lives Matter doing? Judging them by the colour of their skin. Yeah, I, I, Black, it's an evil, evil, evil movement. Martin um, Luther King is rolling in his grave easily. Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Um, uh, what do I think of crypto? Uh, crypto yeah. cur cryptocurrency, I assume. Um, I have a friend who, um, who's investing in it pretty heavily and he's um, attempting to um, convince me that uh, there's money to be made in it. I've looked at it about three or four times and so forth, haven't got um, involved in it uh, personally. Confuses but, me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, philosophically, I'm, so I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm qualified to talk about it from a pragmatic point of view, but philosophically, I like it. The reason I like it is because it is unregulated, untraceable. unregulated, untraceable, got nothing to do with the government. In fact, the governments don't like it very much. Yeah, that's why could, we like we like it. That's right. I think if they could think of a way to stamp it out, they would. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, even if they tried, I don't think they would succeed. And um, uh, so, for that for that purpose, um, I like it. There, yeah. there, is, there are issues, of course, about. Um, uh, whether it's safe um, and uh, yeah, it confuses you know, me. Whether it's being manipulated and all that sort of stuff, but um, uh, you know, fundamentally, I like the idea of money that's not that's not regulated by the government. Yeah, who's talking clean-headed libertarian in Australia? <laughs> What's a clean head? Bull. Oh, oh that's well. Dean. Is it? Yeah, well. But let, let's have a contest, Dean, to see who's the best looking. I think uh, you're better looking than Dean. <laughs> Dean is a white man who happens to look Mongolian. Like, what kind of a weird combination is that? Yeah. All right, let's see if there are any other good questions. Otherwise, I think we're done. We've had a really great live stream. Um, we have over 30 viewers uh, with all of the platforms that I went live on altogether. Um, uh, I don't know if this is a new question or you've already answered it. Uh, hey, David, you supported ScoMo's no jab, no pay bill, not so libertarian. Now are you? What taxpayer money for your kids squirt them up with poisons? 
what the hell? No libertarian there. No, I didn't. I didn't support. Um, Sorry, I should have read it before I popped it up on the screen. Okay, so no jab, no pay refers to um, uh, you can't put your children in. You can put your children into childcare, but you can't be subsidised um, by taxpayers if they haven't been vaccinated against uh, whooping cough and various other things. If they haven't had their normal childhood vaccinations, so that's that's I that's think a that's parents' that. choice. So that my view was that this is not um, forcing people to get their kids vaccinated. This is saying um, we are going to put conditions on you receiving money, uh, other people's money. It is no different in principle from receiving unemployment benefits and being told you have to apply for jobs. Um, while you're receiving unemployment benefits. Otherwise, mm. we're going to take it away from you. It's free money. It's other people's money. So in the in the childcare sector, what was happening is they were receiving a substantial subsidy for their, um, for their childcare, and the condition was their children had to be vaccinated um, with the recommended vaccinations in order to receive that money. So the parents had the choice. They could still put their kids in the childcare, um, but they had to pay for it themselves. So that the difference was that they were receiving other people's money. Now, if we're going to hand out other people's money unconditionally, um, then I'm sorry, um, you've lost me. Okay, fair enough. I don't, I don't have anything to add in, in, in terms of that. Um, all right, I think we're good. Um, the, the one who you wanted to ignore earlier came back in the chats um, and I temporarily blocked him. And then he started attacking me, so I, I I blocked him. I didn't I didn't attack him on his personal life, and he chose to do that to me. So I don't know what That's kind of character that shows. Sorry. Doesn't surprise me. No. No. Well, I didn't attack him. I did call him a lady, but I didn't. Like that's just me being silly. He can suck it up. Like that wasn't me being nasty. But anyway. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on my show. I really do appreciate it. It's very kind of you to do it so last minute. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I hope you had fun. I can tell you did. You've laughed more with me than you did with Dean. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end the broadcast now. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. <laughs>